there are odd number of if there are odd number of uh, terms and you need to find the mean arithmetic mean of the middle two terms if it is an even number of terms right now when you do that you need to be very careful in how you write it the median is the 11th term here not 11 i mean i mean look at the two sta statements okay here you are saying median equal to 11 and then you are saying then the median score is 3 this is not the same okay so be very very careful about that okay um so another one is uh, and they, this appeared, I think, in several uh, other people's, uh, etc. So be very careful when you are looking for the, you know, uh, n plus 1 by 2th term and when you are finding the actual median. Just write it as median is that th term. Okay, that is very important. <coughs> Another thing is, okay, in this one, okay, I mean, obviously these, this part, okay, this red part, can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay. So this part corresponds to, this is red, okay, and this part here corresponds to blue, okay, and the red parts here, there is this long thin rectangle. And that corresponds to this blue highlight uh, outline. Now, yes, I can see that you have outlined it correctly, but uh, you know, making the uh, rectangle similar color will make more sense. Okay, so just wanted to mention that. Ah, another big, big, big mistake in several of the works, right? So when you are looking at less than cumulative frequency, I mean, if you are thinking of, if, if this is the corresponding point, okay, um, think about this. How many data points are below 40.5? Less than 40.5? How many? This is the distribution given, okay? And it is not a continuous, so you, I can see that you have made it continuous. You have gone from 40.5 to 50.5 and so on and so forth, which is good, okay? You could have also done 40 to 50, uh, 50 to 60 like that, uh, but that's fine. But uh, the thing is that how many data points are actually below 40.5? You can respond in chat. No data points. Hmm? No data points, right? So this point cannot be this, the X coordinate cannot be 40.5. What should it be? Exactly. It should be 50. Or in this case, because you are made it continuous taking the, uh, you know, 0.5 things. So it should be 50.5, right? Because you can see that, okay, there are three data points which are less than 50 or 50.5, okay? So when you do the less than ojai, you take the upper uh, limits of each class, okay? For the more than frequency, you do take the lower limits because, I mean, you know, think about it. All the points are going to be above 41 or 40.5, right? So there it makes sense. Ah, I didn't, I missed this. This again is incorrect, okay? I completely missed this, sorry. See, the Y coordinates need to be these frequencies, right? It's probably a copy paste error and then you forgot to fix it or whatever. Okay. <clears throat> so, wanted to mention that. Uh, yeah. Same issue here as you can see. 
it should have been 24 like that, uh, then uh, 37 and so on and so forth. So be very careful on that. This part is fine. And when you are doing this graph, it's a better graph would be better because you want a certain level of precision. So uh, anyway, we will get to that. Uh, this, there's no comment in this part. Um, yeah, again, same mistake. Okay. So this is the thing then these need to be uh, changed. It should be zero, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, okay. See, so this is like nicely properly drawn graph and you can do a lot of things based on that. Okay. Now, there are a few good things which I also want to share. Okay, again, none of the points are, you know, you know clear. So this is absolutely a no-no. Uh, okay, now there's something I liked here. Yeah, see, when you are doing the histogram thing, if you figure out this part that which frequencies are in which, um, like, you know, first to fifth data points are in this first rectangle, then sixth to 22nd data point are in the second. When you do that, that is, that helps you see what is happening. Uh, many of you do, did this, uh, you know, intuitively, I mean, you did it, it was not explicitly mentioned, I think, if you mention it explicitly, that's very nice. Okay. Now this is good, except I think there's one point missing. Okay, that, that's fine. Okay. Oh, I, I see. You don't do the last one. You yeah, you stop here. You don't do this last one. Okay. Uh, yeah, and then couple more, just quickly go through it. Yeah, this was done nicely. Yeah. Okay, so that's that one. Um, and let me quickly open one more. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, okay. So this one. Yeah, this one is also nicely done, except you see these three rectangles are very clear, you know, that yellow, the red, and then the blue, that's fine. But here again, the red part is, you know, clear, though I would ideally prefer two different colors for that. Now here, I don't know, I mean, this may be a laziness because you have a three and a one and therefore you did it. 
but ideally this together should be a four by one, not a three plus one. Okay, that doesn't make sense. Look, the visuals are supposed to help you understand better. Okay, so this kind of things, just because you could have copy pasted a yellow rectangle and a blue rectangle, that is not going to cut it. Okay, and uh, either you use same color for these, like on one side and another bunch of colors for, you know, one color for left, one color for right, you can do that. Uh, or you use, you know, all five different, all four different colors, okay? I can see there's a lot of copy paste that has probably happened here, but then you do need to change the colors and certain copy pastes are not okay. This should have been one rectangle. Okay, now, uh, in this case, uh, the, the class intervals all have same length, right? Uh, in that case, you don't really, I mean, why would you need the frequency density in this case? Can you please respond? I think this is Bakya. Ishwati. Yeah. So was there any reason why you took uh, uh, frequency density? No, I thought of editing that part, but I left. I, I wanted to start till that last line. OK. See, the thing is frequency density becomes important when you when the class lengths are not uniform, mm -hmm. right? Then it becomes very important because you want this areas, area of each rectangle to be proportionate to the frequency of uh, the corresponding class. See, each, each rectangle in a histogram corresponds to a particular class, okay? Mm -hmm. And the area of that rectangle must correspond to the uh, frequency. So if the class lengths are all equal, then the just the height of the rectangle uh, is directly proportionate. Okay. Sure. But so then the frequency density is not important at all. Only when you don't have equal class lengths. Okay. <laughs> that is when it becomes important. Okay. 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 Nice. Nice one. Uh, yeah. Okay. So that's what I wanted to share. Uh, mention. So that is done. So key things. One. Uh, be very careful. I mean, be careful on your choice of colors, etc. Okay. Uh, whenever you are making a visual, color should be used with caution carefully so that they convey something. If you are using the same color, that means the something that should be equal or common or same. Wherever you are using a different color, that should mean something. Okay, so keep that in mind. Second, when you are calculating median, be careful when it is the you know 23rd term or 23rd data point versus when the value of the median is 23. The, it is easy to get confused, but I hope you understand uh, where the difference is. Is that point clear? Yes. Okay. Anybody has any doubt on that part? Okay. The next thing is when you have less than cumulative frequency, when you draw the ojai, you take the upper limits. 
because you ask yourself that question how many data points are less than this okay and you and the moment you think along that line it will become very very clear to you same thing applies to more than frequency you again ask the question how many data points are more than this value okay and you will immediately know whether it is the lower class limit or upper class limit okay now so now let me present uh the ppt that i wanted to okay so let me just see where okay okay so we are going to deal with um let me yeah okay so let me just present okay now this was the homework okay now you did one you know not all but some of you did one and you did good okay uh, and we are going to use that and then uh, we will get to the mean part the uh, why do we take the midpoint so that is going to involve a bit of calculus and i hope you will be able to stay with me the second part you pretty much figured out the median class but none of you could act actually did it so we are going to discuss that and then i will give you a little bit further homework on how to do it okay now drawing both the ojays some of you did a fantastic job some of you had some errors so we are going to sharpen our observations here and um, then the last part okay uh that also so those also we are going to discuss to an extent and i will leave it to you to figure it out okay okay so mean for group data now for ungrouped data we kind of saw that you know we write it as a sum and then we try to find the mean now this kind of worked out both for the fair share model and for the fulcrum model okay is everybody familiar with the summation notation yes if okay if not speak up okay okay now for group data then you you cannot have this summation then it becomes an integral and this f of x is basically it is the like you know there's a histogram right so a histogram may look like this okay um this is a very rough drawing so imagine equal class lengths okay now in this case the the f of x is going to be a step function which i'm drawing in blue okay it's going to look like this now that is very clearly a function and it's in, you know nicely integrable function if you integrate it just the function just f of x that will be basically give you the area of the histogram okay all the rectangles that you are seeing now so it, because it's a step function it boils down to you know a sum of these right so each of this blue thing these are i mean the height okay that's what it really matters that will be you know the first one is going to be okay 
So the first one is going to be F1, then F2, F3, F4, F5, like that. So accordingly, that's what it is going to be. Okay. So this is going to be X0, X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. Okay. Maybe I should just um, write that. Okay, so this is x zero. Oops. X one and all the way up to x five. Okay, and this is F1, and this is going to be F5. Okay. You get F2, F3, F4 in between. Okay, and similarly, X to X3, X4, okay? So it basically breaks down into, uh, and you know, this Fi is fixed, it's a constant, so we, okay? So this is what we get. So now what we are going to do is, we are going to focus on just this integral, okay? This integral from Xi minus one to Xi, uh, X minus M, uh, dx okay that's what we are going to do in the next one okay so okay let me clear the drawing okay so if we integrate it like if you integrate x you get x square by two, okay? And, uh, you know, when you integrate a constant, you get that constant times X. That's what we got. And we need to evaluate it at XI minus one and at XI. So we evaluated it at XI, then subtracted, you know, the, the evaluated it at XI minus one and subtracted it, okay? Is this part clear? Any question, anything? Uh, what is M here? M is the unknown median we need to find out. Oh, sorry, uh, not median, mean. So, hang on. Okay, five centimeters. <sighs> Look, for ungrouped data, we use the summation. From this summation, we got the mean, right? Yes. So in, in case of group data, we cannot use a summation because we don't know the individual data points, right? So therefore we have to integrate. It has become a continuum. So that's why we have to integrate. Anytime you go from discrete to a continuum, you move from summation to integration, right? Same thing here. Okay, so M is the mean, which we are trying to find out. And you can take it in both the senses, the fair share sense or the fulcrum sense. In both senses, it works. Okay, and we have already seen that. Okay. So far, so good? Yes. Okay. Now it is just pure algebra and a simple algebra. See, we just reorganize the terms, okay? So we got xi square minus xi minus one whole uh, square over two, and then, you know, factored out m. Now you see xi minus xi minus one is a factor from the first term also, right? 
Uh, so we factored it out and look at what we got. This xi plus xi minus one by two is nothing but the class midpoint, right? It just popped out, okay? All we really used is a little bit of integration and a square minus b square essentially, factorizing a square minus b square, okay? So far so good? Yes. So, and you know, uniform class length. So we can just put a C for class length, okay? Okay, now let's put it all back together, okay? Now, if we put it back together, this is what we get, right? And this have to be equal to zero. And then we solve for M, right? Now, C is a constant, right? So we can completely factor it out. We can divide both sides by C, which we know, I mean, it's class length. So it's definitely non-zero and it can be done. Then we are left with this. Now notice, isn't this exactly the same as, you know, the earlier formula that we had for ungrouped? There we had Xi minus M. Here, instead of Xi, we have the class midpoint. Do you see that? Okay, so this boils down to now this is basically saying the M is basically coming from now you have the histogram. Now imagine a stick figure where the sticks have the same length as the frequencies and their positions at the class midpoint. That will be this picture. So this is a histogram and if you see the blue lines, that's the corresponding stick figure. So as if like, you know, the mass is concentrated at the middle of the rectangle, uh, midpoint of each rectangle. And then it's the same, same thing again. You know how to get it from a stick figure. Okay. So what is interesting is, it's a very simple question. Why do we take midpoint? But to answer that simple question, you know, we had to utilize uh, integration, which is a class 11, 12 level thing. And frankly, I don't know any other way to explain it yet. If I get to know it, um, I'll definitely share with you. Okay. If you guys come up with anything, uh, that would be good too. Okay. Now let's move on to median. Okay. Now, this is what median does, right? This is exactly why you figure out, you know, that n plus one by two or n, n by two and n by two plus one. All that to figure out what is at the middle. So, in this case, median halves it in the sense if there are, let's say, 30 data points, 15 will be less than median, 15 will be more than median. If there is, let's say, 121 data points, then the 61st data point is the median and 60 data points are less than median, 60 data points are more than median, right? So it halves the data in terms of count, okay? How many less, how many more? In that sense, it is 50-50. Now consider group data with uniform class length, okay? Now, this is something I had already mentioned. Height of each rectangle is proportionate to the corresponding frequency, okay? Now, if you don't have that, 
then things that that is when if you don't have uniform class name then to then this this next point doesn't hold that's where the frequency density comes in etc etc so let's not get there because most of the time we do get uniform class lengths okay and again because of the uniformity the area is proportionate to its height and therefore the area is proportionate to the corresponding frequency okay so now what we do is instead now we cannot count because we don't know where each data point is right so we go from count to measure and in this case we that measure would be area because that is what is proportionate to the frequency so the frequency is there but we cannot utilize it in terms of count anymore so we convert the map the frequency into area okay so this is the key thing okay and let me underline it find the line x equal to m that splits the histogram in two parts with equal area okay so this is going to be a vertical line okay i'll show you a picture in the next slide so now what happens is here is your homework now using this notion okay that you have to you have your own histograms now use that to figure out which vertical line halves that histogram with you know so that the two parts on the left and on the right have exactly equal area okay now once you do it for your histogram your data then you try to generalize and derive the formula of the median okay give it a shot if you can't then i'll definitely help you out okay but i'm i'm guessing some of you will be able to do it okay so visually this is what it looks like okay the red and the pink and the purple have equal area okay and you basically have to figure out where it is now you can kind of guess that it this this line this vertical line will come in the median class and most of you have done it you have figured out the median class right so what you can do is think about the you know the total area of this histogram okay so this the first part the first half is going to be that total area by 2 acha let me ask you very quickly what is the total area of the histogram i think it depends uh, because we can take any uh, length of the class no yeah so so let's say put it in this terms okay so let's say class length okay okay class length and then what the frequency that is height okay class length into frequency times frequency but there are so many frequencies so which frequency it will be summation of all frequencies yes yes so the total area of the histogram is class length times the total frequency okay does that make sense to everybody
Okay. Now, now you need to figure out. So this total uh, class length times total frequency by two. That is equal to the area of this purple portion. Now, if you want to look at the purple portion, see, you have got some rectangles which are fully there. So it's easier to compute the area of those rectangles which are fully there. And then you have a rectangle which is like part, right? Not complete, part, right? That part rectangle, you need to find its area separately. And now put everything together, okay? This M that you see, the capital M, M for median, that is your unknown here, okay? So work it out, figure out what happens, okay? So is the homework doable? Okay, good. Now let's get to the next one. Median from Ojai. Okay. Okay, now you all know how to draw the less than Ojai, right? I mean, whatever errors you made, now you, are, you can fix that. Now, again, you know median is something that halves it, right? So you now need to find out. So this is a curve that grows up. Okay, so, uh, you know, this is, this is the curve, right? So this is the total frequency, right? This side, this, uh, this, uh, this is the, this is the line, uh, y equal to total frequency, right? So this is what the frequency needs to be half for median, right? So you, you take this line and you see where it hits the ojai. Okay? So that is very similar to the argument we have for um, ungrouped data. Very similar argument. Okay? So you want to see, okay, so this, this is the again halfway, right? Now, you know all these data points. So you know the equation for the for this, this line segment, the median one, right? So, and you, 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 can, you can see where it will cut it. So again, so your homework will be, Use this ojai to find this exact median. So you intersect the median with this horizontal line y equal to capital N by 2. Capital N is total frequency. You find the x coordinate of the point where it cuts the ojai, and that's the median, right? Um, now, you do that for your own data. And so I noticed that some of you have used a different data when you made a histogram and a different data when you did the ojai. I would recommend that you use the same data for both, okay? Uh, that will make, I mean, feel free to do both for both, that's fine. But if you use the same data for both, then it gives you a better understanding, okay? Um, now, uh, so this again, I think, uh, is it doable? Is it clear what you have to do? Homework three, is that clear? Hello? Yes. Okay, okay, now to derive the formula, what I want you to do is focus on the triangles that you see, okay? These triangles are essentially what kind of, so there are two triangles, right? 
And how are these two triangles related? Anything that is common among these two triangles? They are right triangles, correct. But something more? Um, can you be louder, please? Okay. Yes, they have the same slope. So if you think in terms of triangles, what does that say? Similar triangles. They are similar triangles. Exactly. So if they're similar triangles, then they have certain properties, right? Their sides are also proportionate. So you can use that to figure out what exactly this capital M is going to be um, in terms of uh, the median is going to be in terms of uh, the other things, okay? So that's something you can use to uh, derive the formula, okay? Trust me, it is pretty simple and faith in all of you that you will be able to track it, okay? Okay. Now, now take a look, and this is the picture where both the ogives are there, okay? Now, you can see that, you know, the less than ogive, the blue one is increasing, and the green one, the more than ogive is decreasing. That part is very, very clear, okay? Is there anything else that you notice? Anything else that, you know, strikes your eyes? All the points are equidistant from the this median line, middle line. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. so are you trying to say that um, this line HG, if you extend that line HG, then uh, they are kind of like mirror reflections of each other? Yeah. Okay, yes. You see, sometimes, and NCRT textbook is also a culprit, there is a picture of two medians intersecting, and you look at it, and they're not symmetric, okay? And the symmetry is, has to be there. Okay. Notice another thing. You have noticed the symmetry. Now, do you see that the line segments, the first and the last line segments are kind of standalone, right? The line segment for zero to 10, there is only the green one, the blue one is not there. On the other hand, the 80 to 90, that is only in the blue one and not in the green, right? But other than these two, in everything else, do you see that they are kind of matched? Like, like the, the points are along the same vertical lines. Do you see that? That is something very important. Now, if you notice very carefully, okay? Now I have given you the table, okay? The actual data. Do you see that each line segment corresponds to a class? Yes. Are you able to see that? Now, so 
what is now if you think in terms of slope there is the rise and the run are you familiar with these two terms what is a run for a line segment change in x direction correct and the rise okay now do you see that for this uh, so they are in pairs right now and and the class interval basically is, gives the right run for the pair so that's identical what about the rise what do you think is the rise uh, corresponding to any line segment What is the rise for the line segments uh, between 20 and uh, 30? Sorry, 10 and 20. Okay, for the green one or the blue one? Blue one. And for the green one? What is the rise for the green one? It looks minus 20. I mean, come on, the coordinates are given. Calculate. Okay. 20 minus 20. 71 minus 92 is how much? Uh, 21. Negative 21, right? Yes. So you see for the blue one, it is positive 21. For the green one, it is negative 21. Okay. Now let's take the line segments between 40 and 50. Okay. What are the... What is the rise for the blue one? 11. And the green one? Minus 11. Do you see that they are chorus? The rise for the blue one is basically the frequency. Hmm. Right? Yeah. And for the green one, it is negative frequency. So, for each pair of line segment, the run is the same. That's basically the class interval. And the run, uh, sorry, the rise is, you know, opposites. Positive frequency and less negative frequency. That is why they look like mirror reflection. That is why they are mirror reflections. Okay. Now. So, this is, you know, so this basically summarizes all that we have discussed, okay? This mirror reflection, they're paired, each represents a class, so therefore the run is this, rise is this, okay? So, they are the corresponding frequency and negative of that, okay? Now, okay? So, okay, what I realize is I should have animated it, but that's okay. So what do you need to prove to show that they intersect? The median is basically you need to prove that where they intersect, the Y coordinate is capital N by two, total frequency by two. That's what you need to prove, okay? So these are the last two homeworks. So what you need to do is Again, find the y coordinate of the point of intersection of the ogives for your data. Again, stick with the same data. Okay. 
if you have already draw, drawn beautiful ojaiv you know nicely neatly then you don't need to repeat that work okay uh, if you have made some mistakes then you do need to redraw okay now what i mean when i say find the y coordinate exact uh, etc is that you see you have two line segments you know uh, corresponding to the median class you know the exact coordinates so you need to find the intersection not by reading the graph but by doing the algebra necessary okay so so do that okay now the next thing is to prove the general case again you can see like four triangles right and you can see that they are in fact they are okay now we have enough to show that they are congruent pairs okay that needs a bit of proof but they are definitely like two congruent pairs that is very clear also they are similar right so use the similar triangle aspect to prove the general case that whenever two ojives intersect the y coordinate of the point of intersection is going to be n by 2 and once the y coordinate is n by 2 the x coordinate has to be the median by definition okay so i think once you do this homework then you will be all set okay so that's what we have for today any question can you give an example general example where we use generally a mean median and where we use the mean okay in a real life for example one example that i see uh, i don't know why they use but uh, for uh, calculating median salaries in an organization uh, like salaries they use median yeah okay so i think i can stop share right now okay see the thing is when you have a skewed distribution uh something that looks like this oops okay or uh, let's say something that looks like this okay so there may maybe one data values here but because of them the mean gets pulled this way okay but if you use median then it will be somewhere here because I, or maybe even here okay because uh, you see the areas have to be the same like this portion this area has to be the same as this area okay so a median tells you like you know 50% is less than this 50% is more than this now let's say the salary of most of the people are let's say between is something like you know less than say 5000 and there are let's say five people total okay and most means this is let's say um 20 plus people okay and there are five people whose salary is greater than 10000 okay now if you use the uh 
mean, then most likely the average salary would be something like 7,000 or 8,000, okay? But if you use the, um, if you use the median, then this is going to be more like, let's say, you know, 4,000, okay? Now notice, only five people are getting more than 10,000, okay? And most people, let's say 20 plus people, they are getting less than 5,000. So if you want to say what is the average salary, okay, which paints a better picture? 4,000. What do you think? 4,000, the median, which, which is exactly. closer. Exactly. Because, see, even if there is one person with a very high salary, okay, let's say out of this five, let's say one person, one person has a very high salary of, let's say, 30,000. That will mean that <coughs> the, that will really pull the uh, average all the way to even something like maybe, I don't know, I mean, 10,000 or more, or maybe 15,000, I don't know. But it will do, at least 10,000 it, it might, right? That, that may not make any sense. Now, if you are more like a management person, you want to project it in a lucrative way, right? Then <coughs> you won't report the median. You will report the mean. <coughs> okay? So this is one example. The other example actually comes from a very practical A. So in many places, you need to find, um, okay, so let, okay, let me put it this way. Okay, now there is another thing called mean deviation. It is not used much, <coughs> but if you want to use it, Anybody can tell me what is the meaning of mean deviation? The, uh, like the difference, <laughs> average difference from the mean? No. The mean here doesn't come from deviation from mean. The mean here comes as mean of deviations from some value, okay? Now, if you do a bit of math, okay? Let's say, okay, let me draw a number line, okay? Let's say this is a number line, positive number line. And let's say these are the data points. I'm just going to put some. Think that should do it. Okay. Now, if if the value from which you want to find your deviation, if the value is within this range, <coughs> then it is going to be less. In fact, you can prove that if it is at this point, at the middle point, Okay, then it is going to be minimum. <coughs> now, is there anything which is maximum? Well, if you put the point outside, you can make it go as far from all these points as you want. And the farther it goes from the rest of this data, the more this deviations is going to be, right? So essentially, 
this thing here we have, okay? This thing has no upper bound, so to speak, okay? It can be as large as you want, right? So then the question is, however, it does, Okay, <clears throat> now since it does have a minima, so we need to use that, right? So, so we should use the value that minimizes uh, this mean of deviations. Right? Now, when you say mean of deviations, again, when you are talking about minimizing that, it basically boils down to not just the mean, but basically sum. Okay? So now that is done by the median. So if you have odd number of data points, that will be just that, okay? If you have even number of data points, let's say there was another data point somewhere here. If there was another data point, then any value here, any value here would have done the job anything here it can be here 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 anything is going to give you the same thing okay now obviously median is the midpoint here and that would also do it so mean deviation should always be calculated from the median, not from the mean, okay? Now, yeah, popularly it is, it is uh, done from the mean, okay, many a times. That's because see, statistics is used by many people and not all of them <coughs> may have a strong mathematical background as whatever it may sound, okay? There's a lot of number crunching in, um, in uh, statistics, and that can be done by machines or spreadsheet or calculator. But the analytical ability is not in demand there, right? So many people can use mean. <clears throat> now, another part where this sum of deviation or mean of deviation becomes important is to minimize discomfort, okay? So this apparently happened historically. Okay, that's what we have been told. So when they had started public transport bus in Kolkata or in West Bengal, I don't know. Okay, so they wanted the height of the seat to be, uh, I mean, to be so that it is the most comfortable. So what they did is they had the demographic data and based on that, they found the median height and used that to compute, to figure out, to decide what should be the height of the seats in the bus, in the public buses, okay? Um, similar considerations will be taken to uh, figure out where you, you know, toilet heights. Okay, uh, and, and, and like that. So, <clears throat> so in terms of reducing the discomfort, uh, median is better than mean because you are again looking at the deviations and, and, and devi by deviation we mean something like this. <clears throat> Uh, 
it's the absolute value of x minus, you know, let me say m, where x is a data value and m is the median or whichever, right? So you're looking at this absolute values, okay? So um, median uh, minimizes the deviation, the sum of the deviations and therefore the mean of the deviations. So when it, it is, uh, it is uh, related to, you know, reducing discomfort, okay? Then again, median is much better than mean. However, when you are talking about, uh, you know, um, how many chapatis you should make to feed a family, there you need to consider, I mean, and you want to know average how many rotis they eat, etc. There you need to use the mean, not median. Because there you ultimately need the sum of the values. And the sum of the values are, you know, related to the mean, not the median. Okay. So that's where the fair share thing also to an extent comes in. So depending upon the situation you choose. Okay. Um, anytime it's a skewed distribution, median is better than the mean. <coughs> median doesn't get influenced by outliers, mean does. The main advantage of mean is that algebraically it is extremely simple. There's a neat algebraic formula, summation of xi by n, okay? And because of that, mean has been used more and in certain probabilistic aspects also, there is no choice but to use mean. But until and unless you are doing something like that, uh, most of the time median is a better, better measure of central tendency, a better representative value, most of the time. Does that help answer your question? Yes, thank you. Okay. So again, we have short over time. So unless there are other questions, I will stop here. Okay, see you next week. Thank you, sir. Okay, bye.